Hello, my name is Ben Davis and welcome to this Digital Photo Lightroom tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the different tools to make local adjustments to your images. One of the benefits of working in Photoshop is the ability to use layers, but tools like the Adjustment Brush and Radial Filter, available in both Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw, work in a very similar way. This means you can make edits to specific parts of your image rather than universally across the entire frame, giving you fantastic control over the final look of your pic. If you're ready to find out exactly how it works, I'll begin. To start off, you need to import a RAW file into the Lightroom library. You can either use one of your own images, or if you want to work along with the same picture as me, you'll find the file trinidad.dng in the Start Images folder. So I'm just going to import that now. I'm going to click on Import at the bottom left of the library module. Then I'm going to navigate to where the file is kept. At the moment, it's in the Start Images folder. Make sure it's ticked and then just click Import. Once it's in, I'm going to select the file by clicking on it and then click Develop to enter the editing module. The first thing that I want to do now that's in here is apply any lens corrections. So I'm going to open up this tab here and all I need to do is go into the basic panel and then tick Enable Profile Corrections and Remove Chromatic Aberration and Lightroom will automatically fix any lens errors. Just to check that Lightroom has correctly identified the lens, just head over to Profile and look in this drop down menu here. If uh, you're using the same start image as me, then it should be the Nikon 24-70 to 2.8 lens. If you're using your own image, then most likely this information will be different. If Lightroom hasn't managed to identify the lens, you can find it by going through these drop-down options here. I'm just going to head back to the basic panel and under hit the upright control so we can fix any sort of alignment issues. I'm just going to click on level just to slightly fix up the horizon. Now to really get going with this picture, I want to give it a really tight crop. This picture was actually shot on a Nikon D810 camera which has got a 36 megapixel resolution which means I'm able to make really quite tight crops into the image without losing uh, detail. So I'm going to select the crop tool from the toolbar here at the top, you can press R on the keyboard for a shortcut. I'm going to make sure that the aspect ratio is set to original so therefore I'm keeping the same dimensions to the frame. I'm going to click on the edge of the bounding box and just pull in uh, somewhere in like that and again on this side you can do the same any of these handles just to pull in the shape that you want I'm going to set it somewhere like that and you can click inside with this hand here and just move the shape around to fine-tune the position uh, of your new frame and I'm going to leave it set somewhere like that and then once you're happy with the new frame in simply click done at the bottom to exit the crop tool to start altering the tones and the balance of, sort of highlights and shadows, we need to head up to the basic tab, that's the one at the top here. I'm also going to open up the histogram here so I can see uh, the map of tones, just so I can see what's happening as we adjust these sliders. I'm going to start off by pushing the contrast slider all the way up to 80 to inject an awful lot of contrast into this picture. To start with, it's going to look like too much, but we're going to pull back some shadow detail in the next steps. I'm going to start with a highlight slider though, I'm going to take that all the way down to minus 100 to restore detail in the brighter parts of the picture. The shadow slider below I'm going to set to plus 100 and that's going to reveal detail in all of the darker parts of the picture. I'm going to leave the white slider set in the zero position but I'm going to push the black slider all the way to plus 100 uh, just to shift the black point into its maximum position. Uh, below you'll find the clarity slider here in the present sliders if I just scroll down slightly. The clarity slider works by affecting contrast on the edges of midtones. You can either take it uh, down making less contrast on those areas making the image appear softer or you can push it up, adding more contrast, adding a uh, sort of definition and increasing the, the clarity as, as the slider is called. I'm going to set the clarity slider to around about plus 60 just to add quite a bit extra um, definition to the edges in those areas. The vibrant slider below, that controls the more muted colours and there's quite a few in this scene, uh, especially the sky and perhaps some of these buildings. So I'm going to push the vibrant slider up to plus 50. I'm going to add quite a lot extra into those areas. But just to stop the colours from becoming too intense, I'm going to take the saturation slider down to minus 10 and this one just controls all the colours so it just takes them back a little bit so I've not gone too far and made it too vibrant and intense with the colours. The next thing I'm going to do is with the adjustment brush and that's going to be a bit like using layers in Photoshop because I'm going to make adjustments to just specific areas of the image. I'm going to start off by affecting the sky because I want to make it a little bit darker, a little bit more interesting and a little bit bluer. So I'm going to select the adjustment brush from the toolbar, you can press K on the keyboard for a shortcut. You might find that these sliders are in slightly different positions because it remembers uh, when you used it last time, it saves those settings. So just to reset them all back to the beginning, to their default zero position, just double click effect and they'll all go back to the middle. 
I'm going to start off by pushing the contrast slider to about uh, 30, just to add a bit more contrast to the sky when we paint it in. I'm going to take highlights down to minus 100 just to bring out more detail in those areas. I'm going to push the shadows to 100 as well, uh, just in case I go over perhaps part of the, the trees here. As I'm adding the contrast, that's going to be boosting the blacks, but I don't want the blacks to become too heavy, which is why I'm setting the shadow slider up to 100 just to keep detail in those areas. I'm also going to increase the saturation slider to 30 as well, just to increase the colours in the sky and make those blues a bit richer. So leave it set somewhere like that. If I just scroll down a bit here, you've got these brush controls. You can adjust the size either with the slider or the scroll wheel on your mouse. I'm going to set it somewhere around about 19, 20, something like that. And that's a good size there for me to paint in the sky. I'm going to take the feather down slightly to around about 90. And I'm going to leave the other sliders where they are at the 100 position. And I'm not going to tick auto mask. So with all that set up, I just simply click and drag and paint over the sky. You can see the changes happening there. If I just paint in that area, you can then press O on the keyboard. And that gives you a overlay mask so you can see exactly where it is being painted. So you can just cover in that area to make sure you've not missed any patches. And say you've made a slight mistake and you've gone a bit over this building too much, you can hold down the Alt key on the keyboard, and that instantly swatches your brush to the Erase brush. So you can then just have that. I'm going to increase the size slightly and just erase. Well, I'm still holding Alt on the keyboard. Just erase that area there just so I'm not painting this, these settings over the building because I only want to be affecting the sky. I could even perhaps take this size down. I'm still holding Alt, by the way. Just painting that tower a little bit there. And even over perhaps some of the tree. If I take my finger off Alt, I've got the adjustment brush back. I'm going to tap O on the keyboard just to take the overlay mask off so I can see the effect of the sky. And something like that looks good to me. I'm happy with that. If you can actually see the effect that we've gone by toggling it on and off with this little button here and you can see we've just made the sky a little bit bluer and a little bit more richer and interesting. Now I'm going to use this adjustment brush as well to paint in over these cobbles just to beef them up a bit too to add a bit more detail to this foreground. So if I just scroll up I'm going to click new within the adjustment brush so I get a new brush. I'm not going to be painting different settings but I need to set these all back to the beginning so I'm going to click double click effect and there they go back to the default position. This time I want a different brush. It's going to have a few similar settings. I'm going to take the highlights down to what minus 100 again just to get any more detail I can in those areas and also shadows up to 100 again just for detail in those darker bit, uh, parts. And the clarity slider I'm going to set to 100 as well just to add the most amount of definition I can to those areas. And I'm just going to decrease my brush slightly using the scroll wheel just so I can get it in there. I'm going to tap O just so I can see where I'm painting and just go around there and over those cobbles and press O again to turn that off and just have a look at the effect that we've got and I'm happy with that. So I'm going to click done to exit this adjustment brush tool. The next tool I want to use is the radial filter and again this is a bit like using layers because I can make changes to just specific parts of the image and rather than brushing in this time the radial filter allows you to pull a circular or elliptical shape that you can then position anywhere over the image and the uh, settings that you have selected for that area will take place either inside or outside depending if you invert the mask or not. So I'll show you exactly how it works. If you select the radial filter from this toolbar you can press shift plus M on the keyboard for a shortcut. And that's open that up. We've got the same set of sliders as we had in the adjustment brush. And once again, I'm double clicking effect. So they all go back to the beginning and we can set this up how we want it. I'm going to push the temperature slider to about 15 just to make this effect a bit warmer as we add it in there. Uh, I'm going to take it down a little bit. 15, there we go. The exposure slider, I'm going to push up to around about 0.5, just adding half a stop of brightness. Contrast, I'm going to set to 20, just to add a bit more there. Sunlight is quite contrasty. And I'm going to make sure that feather this time, if I scroll down, is set to 80. And also make sure the invert mask is ticked. So if it's not, just click in there to select it. And that means these effects are going to happen inside the shape that we draw. So I'm going to start off by clicking and dragging a large shape over this area, something like that, a nice sort of circle. In the middle, you've got a pin. You can click on that 
and move it just to pull it into position. And this uh, up here in the sky, I want sort of uh, imagining the sun is somewhere just out of shot, so therefore this part of the sky would be a bit brighter and warmer coloured as if the sun was up there. And we can then add a few of the patches of sunlight bouncing around this picture just to create a bit more depth and a bit more interest. The next one I'm going to add is on this chap here on the horse and cart. He's one of the main points of interest for me in this picture. So I'm just going to click and drag and pull that open and then I'm going to position him there so he's just as if he's just going into a nice bit of warm sunlight that's hitting him as he's going about his daily business. Again, I'm going to add another few pulls so you can just click and drag the shapes and see where they might want to go. Perhaps somewhere like there, somewhere in here, another little pool. You can make them as any size you like, big or small. I'm going to put another one here. See, this one's a bit more elliptical, so I want this light to be on this tower. Make it a little bit wider, get that pin and just move it into position somewhere somewhere in there like that just a little bit of extra light on there and I also want to perhaps create a slight sort of sunbeam effect coming down onto this chap so I'm just going to pull and drag something quite thin I can adjust the size as I go along so I'm gonna get that pin move it roughly into position rotate it round so if you hover your mouse outside you get these rotate arrows I'm just gonna get the angle right somewhere something like that and then I'm gonna click on this end and just make it a bit longer and a little bit narrower and then again I might want to just alter the angle slightly just to match up something like something like that looks good so I've got this extra bit coming in there just as if there's a ray of light shining down upon our gentleman and once again you can toggle this effect on and off just to see the impact it's had on the image by clicking this little button here and you can see that's without the radial filter and then with it back on again you can see there's a much more sort of depth and interest to the light and this warm light over here just helps to create uh, a more vibrant picture. I also want to use the radial filter tool to help focus attention towards the center of the image and I'm going to use that with a different set of settings on these sliders. So to do that I'm going to click new to select a new radial filter. I'm going to double click effects just to clear these and this time I want to set sharpness down to minus about minus 80 something like that thereabouts and that means it's going to sort of blur or soften everywhere that falls outside of the radial filter. So I'm just going to scroll down here, I'm going to make sure the feather, I'm going to take that down a little bit to around about 60 and I need to make sure the invert mask isn't ticked so therefore the, this uh, sharpening effect that's happening or in fact the blur effect because we're taking sharpness away is happening outside of the radial filter. So once again I'm going to click and drag and pull my shape something like that. I'm going to get hold of the pin in the middle and move it in there somewhere just so it's over the central part. And now we've got this area outside of the radial filter softly blurred so it's helping to focus attention in towards the center of this picture. You can again adjust the size if you want. I'm going to perhaps pull that down a little bit just to fine tune where that blur falls exactly. And then once you're happy with it, simply click done at the bottom here just to exit the radial filter tool. Another thing I want to do to this image is just to enhance the detail a little bit. And you can do that with the detail tab and that's where you actually affect sharpness across the image. I'm going to start off uh, if you just by zooming into this area here you can select this a target tool just to then pick a item of detail on the picture I'm going to choose this gentleman here with his hat on and a cigar hanging out of his mouth by the look of things so let's click there just so you can then put him in the window or another item of detail so you can really observe the sharpening as it's happening uh, I'm going to start off by setting the amount slider to 100 just going to add quite a lot of sharpening to this picture uh, somewhere up about there, that's great. I'm going to leave radius set to 1 pixel. I'm going to take detail down to 5. Now then the masking slider is one of the most important ones really is that dictates where sharpening is happening in the picture. Normally you don't want it to be happening everywhere because you don't want to sharpen details that lack any edges because therefore you're going to be adding image artifacts and things like that. And the best way to see where it's being sharpened is to hold down alt as you move this masking slider and that shows you an edge mask. So you can see my image here, the black areas aren't being sharpened, the white ones are. I'm going to keep pushing this to the right and leave it set where just the stronger edges are being sharpened. So somewhere about there, 85. So you can imagine the blue parts of the sky, there's no edges there, so there's no sharpening happening. But the edge of the clouds, there is some detail, so that's being sharpened. And something like that looks great. Also here, if you scroll down, you've got the noise reduction sliders. I'm going to set the luminance slider to 20. And this one just combats grain, sort of digital noise in the picture, and just helps to smooth it out a little bit. So I'm going to leave that one set round about 20, and I don't need to worry 
with these other two. The final thing I want to do to this picture before we finish is to add a little vignette and that's just going to help to darken the edges of the frame just to focus attention towards the middle. So if I just scroll down here we've got the effects tab. I'm going to start off with the amount slider under the post crop vignetting controls. I'm going to take amount down to about minus 25 just to add a dark effect to the edge of the image. The midpoint I'm going to take down to minus 25 as well. If you, again, if you hold down Alt you get a better idea of what's happening. Uh, so I'm going to take that to minus 25. That pulls the middle in a little bit. The roundness slider I'm going to take to minus 70. So once again you can hold Alt on the keyboard just to see uh, a much more dramatic uh, vision of what's happening. So I'm just keeping the vignette closer to the edges of the frame. It's not coming in too far. I'm going to set feather to 100 to have a nice soft effect and highlights to 100 as well. So if there are any highlights and bright parts in the corners there, they're not being darkened. They'll still shine through. Now then, that's the end of the process for this image. I'm happy with the journey that it's taken. If I press the backslash key on the keyboard, you can see a before minus the crop controls. Uh, that's still there. If you remember the start image, it was a much wider picture we we cropped into that but you can see this very flat image with very muted colors a lack of detail in the darker parts and the brighter parts and if i just press the backslash key once more it returns us to our current state where you can see we've really made it much more vibrant we've created this fantastic sort of sunlight effect streaking down here making the sky brighter and picking out detail and also using the radial filter as well just to help focus attention towards the central part of the image and now i need to export this image uh, so i can use it elsewhere because in lightroom you're using non-destructive editing these are just instructions to a raw file so nothing has actually changed so to make sure you actually get a file you can use on the internet perhaps you want to post it online or email or get a print made you need to make a JPEG so to do that click file go to export open up the export dialog window here you have the controls I want to keep it on the desktop that's where I want to create this new file I'm gonna go down I'm gonna give it a custom name I'm gonna call this Trinidad edit because uh, it was taken in Trinidad in Cuba I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to set the uh, image format to JPEG. There are other options here if you want to. And I'm going to limit the file size to 5000 k That's 5 megabytes, so it's not going to be too big on my desktop, but I'll still get a good quality image with that without too much compression. And that's all I need to do. So with that done, just click Export here, and that new file will be created on the desktop. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video enjoyable and informative and make sure you do give this technique a go on your own images and see how you can make local adjustments to different areas to really pep up your pictures. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.